Usually when we start the instructions for breath meditation, we start by saying, focus on one spot in the body where the breath is most obvious. Allow the breath to become comfortable at that spot. In some cases this involves allowing, in other cases it involves experimenting to see what kind of breathing feels good there. And then once that spot has become comfortable, then you spread that sense of comfortable awareness throughout the body. That's when you expand your awareness of the whole body as well. But sometimes if you focus on one spot, it makes the breath smaller and smaller, and your awareness gets smaller and smaller, which is not good. So in cases like that, you can start off by being aware of the whole body, consciously making yourself aware of everything from the head down to the feet. And in the context of that larger body awareness, then you breathe and see if that opens up the breath, makes it more refreshing, more satisfying. Sometimes you hear the question, why focus on the breath? When you die, you're going to have to leave the breath. Why don't you focus on something that goes with you when you die, like your awareness? Actually, all the things that you can concentrate on, body, feelings, mind, mental qualities, are things that you're ultimately going to have to abandon anyhow. We focus on any of these, and we focus on the breath primarily as training wheels things we're going to have to get to know, but ultimately we're going to have to go past. As the Buddha said, you focus on these things as your establishings of mindfulness or as your frames of reference for the sake of comprehending them and for the sake of overcoming desire for them. So even though you live with them, in fact that's what concentration is all about, it's putting these things together and learning how to stay with them. You stay with them so that you comprehend them, and you comprehend them so you can go beyond your desire for them. Then you let them all go. That's how you can release. But you don't let them all go from the start. After all, they are your path. And you try to make them as good a path as possible. Bring them all together in a way that feels balanced strong, refreshing, so the mind likes to stay here. Because the real pleasure that comes from concentration is not so much pleasure from the body or from the feelings. It's the pleasure of having the mind settle down and be still, have some peace inside. And also the pleasure that has, comes from having some control over what the mind is going to do. Because these topics of concentration, the component factors of concentration, are also the things that we have cravings for. Craving for the body, craving for feelings, craving for certain mind states. And the Buddha compares craving to a river. He says there is no river at all like craving. Because unlike rivers, the currents of craving can flow every which way. Rivers tend to flow only in one direction, but craving can flow in every direction. And if you have no control over it, it can take you anywhere at all. The Buddha's explanation of how beings pass on. He said it's like a fire going from one house to another. And in the space between the houses, the fire is sustained by by the wind. Whereas one being goes from one life to the next, it's sustained by craving. The craving flows out. And if you have no control over it, it could take you anywhere at all. So when you're practicing concentration, you're learning some control. Or when the mind goes to the body or feelings or mind or metal qualities. It goes where it, you want it to. It develops good metal qualities. because, And the list of metal qualities that the Buddha has in his description of the establishing of mindfulness, there are good and bad. You've got the hindrances and you've got the factors for awakening. Then there are others that are more neutral. 
you've got the aggregates, but then they become part of suffering when they become clinging aggregates. You've got the sense media, and they become the topic for suffering when you start developing fetters around what you see and hear and smell and taste, or simply fetters around the fact that you like having these senses to begin with. So they're good and bad in all of these things. And so you want to learn how to gain some control so that the mind goes only for the good, only for the skillful ones. And you want to do that while you're still healthy and alert. Your mind is still clear. So it becomes second nature. For most of us, second nature has nothing to do with control at all. The mind just flows any way it wants to go. So as death approaches and your faculties get restricted, in some cases your mind isn't really right at that point, you just fall back on old habits. So with the practice of concentration, we're trying to develop good habits. You bring the breath, which is part of the body, together with the mind. And you try to fit them together in such a way that there's a sense of well-being. The mind feels good with the breath, and the mind doesn't put too much pressure on the breath. Because what you want in state of concentration is awareness filling the body, breath filling the body, a feeling of ease filling the body. You bring these things together. And how do you do that? You do that with the mental qualities of the factors for awakening, the mental qualities of the path. So you've got all four frames of reference right here. And as John Lee would often say, you try to make them four in one. So right where the breath is, the feeling of ease is. Right where the feeling of ease and the breath are, there's your mind. And it's sustained by all the good qualities and the factors for awakening the good qualities of the path. In the beginning, it takes some adjustment. This is what directed thought and evaluation are all about. And why in the first John, you've still got to do some thinking. You're trying to get these things to come together in a way that feels really good. And once there's a sense of well-being, you let it spread. So it suffuses the body. The sense of refreshment suffuses the body. And when things come together just right, that's when the mind can drop the direct of thought and evaluation and just be together. All these things then come together. They feel like they're one. Your awareness and the feeling and the breath. Now as they become one, it's like taking a bottle of oil and vinegar or a bottle of oil and water. And they used to be sh shaken around a lot, but you let them settle down. And as they settle down, these things that are together there in the bottle begin to separate out. And it's the same with your awareness and the breath and the feeling. You begin to see that they really are separate things. The body has to do with the elements of earth, water, wind, and fire. Or as we would say in the West, the properties of solidity, liquidity, warmth, and energy. Feelings are none of those things. There's pleasure and there's pain that can come from these things, but the feeling, feeling itself is something different. And then the awareness of the feeling is something separate from the feeling. When these things are still together for a while, you can begin to see them separate out. As you go from one level of concentration to deeper and deeper levels, these things begin to separate out. And when you hit the fourth jhana, the breath grows still. And you can move from that to the sense where there is no sense of the body at all. There's just a large sense of space and awareness of the space. And then the perception of space falls away and you're left with the awareness. Your perception of the oneness of the awareness falls away, and you're left with nothingness. That's so how you move up by allowing these things to separate out. Once you've seen them separate out in this way, then you don't feel so overwhelmed, say, by pain when it comes. 
because you realize the pain is one thing and the awareness is something else. The body is something else. There's a lot to explore just in this one issue of how these three things, even when they're right together, are different. And seeing their difference, seeing that they're separate in this way, is what puts you in a better position of control. So that regardless of what the pain is, or what the state of the body is, the awareness can still be clear. And then, as the Buddha says, even that is something you want to go beyond, because all of these things are dhammas, they're phenomena. We want to go to something beyond phenomena. But at the very least, you want to have some control over the phenomena, in case you can't go beyond entirely. You have a sense of direction, and a sense that you can actually go in the direction you want to. These are some of the skills we develop as we meditate, focused on the breath, focused on feelings and awareness. As I said, these are training wheels. There are things that ultimately you're going to have to go past. But you don't go past them until you've mastered them. And you can't master them until you spend a lot of time with them, a lot of time bringing them together. So take advantage of this time right now when you can settle down with just these things, with no other concerns, no other worries. Because the skill of getting some control here. so that the currents of your craving don't go flowing off in every which way, and instead start flowing in the direction you want them to go. Are things that you do know how to direct. So that once they've taken you where you want to go, you can put them aside. With a sense of appreciation, think of that image of the person crossing over the river of the raft. As I would have said, when you're on the river, you do have to hold on to the raft and make an effort. You get to the other side, you can put the raft aside. You don't have to carry it with you. But you do have a sense of appreciation for the raft. Even our hunts, after they have gained awake and continue practicing mindfulness focused on the body, feelings, mind states. The relationship, though, is different. They say they focus on these things and dissociate it from them. And the pleasant abiding that they have is no, not so much pleasure in the body or feelings. It's pleasure in the freedom. <laughs> 